Hey there artists, welcome back to Miss Goldie's Art Room. Today we're going to do a perspective landscape drawing. So as you can see in my example, there is a foreground, middle ground, and background. In the foreground, objects appear the biggest because they are closest to us. As you go further back in the landscape, things are going to get smaller and smaller. So we're going to do this drawing today and to fill the space, we're going to use different types of lines, shapes, and designs. Okay, artists, the first thing we need to do is decide if we want to make our paper going vertical up and down or horizontal side to side. These two I did horizontal, so maybe this one I'll do vertical. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to do our three sets of hills, one for the foreground, one for the middle ground, one for the background. So we want to make the hills nice and smooth. In other words, artists, we don't want to do this. Right, just nice and smooth. So we'll do the first set. In the middle, we'll do a second set. And in the background, we'll do the last set of hills. Now, you can either do a tree or a house and a tree. I did a house and a tree on these. Maybe for this one, I'm just going to do a tree. As we know, in the foreground, objects appear the biggest. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my big tree, maybe add some roots. And I'm going to erase that line, right? You don't wanna make it above the hill, you wanna make it on it. I'm gonna add my leaves. Now for the middle ground, things are gonna get a little bit smaller. So if you would like to, maybe take something like a crayon. I can see that this is about the size of a crayon. So I'm gonna make the next one a little bit smaller. And then I'll add my leaves. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase that. Again, add some roots. We can see that this one is a little bit smaller than the crayon. So this one is gonna be even smaller in the background. and I'll add my leaves. I'm gonna all erase that little line there. So there you go. Large foreground, medium sized middle ground, small background. Like every piece of artwork, we're gonna decide is this nighttime or daytime? So I think I'm gonna actually make this one nighttime. Now, instead of just coloring everything in, we're also gonna think about some different lines, designs, and patterns to fill our spaces. So feel free to pause and go back to use that lines and patterns and design slides to give you some inspiration. So for this first set of hills, I'm gonna think of maybe a shape. So maybe I'll do some hearts. The key is you don't want to make things too small. Remember, everything you draw, you're pretty much going to color. If it's too teeny tiny, this point of the crayon will not be able to color it in. Maybe on the next set of hills, I'll do some curvy lines on a diagonal. So here we go, some nice curvies. I'm gonna go behind the tree or whatever it is I drew. And then on the next set of hills, maybe I'll do some circles. Maybe different size circles, but again, nothing too small. Now that this is finished, we're gonna take our Sharpie and we're gonna trace everything. If 
you don't have a Sharpie, feel free to use a black pen or a black colored pencil. Take your time, go slow, stay on your pencil marks. Remember, you're in control and not the other way around. Once we're finished, we're going to take our eraser. We also want to think about where we want to sign our artwork. So I think I'm going to sign mine right over here. Now, if you have only crayons or colored pencils, you're going to go ahead and color everything in. Remember to do some nice patterns and different shades. Don't just color it flat. If you do have the markers, we're gonna color only certain things. So I'll start with the tree trunks. And if you have a sun or moon, I suggest you color that as well. I'm also going to add some stars with the crayons. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do like sort of an outline on certain things. You want to make it colorful. So what I mean is maybe for these circles, I'm just going to do a nice outline around it and you're going to follow through with the outlines on everything else that you drew. Now that all that is finished, we're going to go ahead and take our tin foil, our cup of water, maybe grab some different size brushes if you have them, and we're going to grab some markers. So I'm going to start with the actual sky, and I'm going to do that with that dark 
purple. All you need to do is draw some on the tin foil, grab a wet brush, and you can just paint right over everything since we colored them with crayon. those stars pop. Maybe I'll take also some blue and I can do a nice layer of blue on top of the purple to make it look like a really dark night sky. Once we're finished with that, we're going to make sure we clean the brush. wipe off our tin foil, then we can move to the next set of hills. So for this, I think I'm actually going to use some turquoise. And maybe for the circles, I'll use some black. I'm gonna take my black and do my circles first. And for these hills, maybe I'll do something different. I'll do some yellow. And there you go, a beautiful landscape painting with a distinct foreground, middle ground, and background.